so I think at this point it's easy to just sit back, relax, and enjoy the rest of the 2024 season because the Montreal Canadiens are done. Now, when it comes to the Habs, all we gotta look forward to is the prospect reports, the commentary going on about the future of some of these young guys, and I guess a few conversations here and there about a good win or a bad loss. I mean, the team's tanking right now, right? Not intentionally losing, but they're still technically losing. So, however they get themselves a higher draft pick, I think is going to be okay. But what I wanted to do after this trade deadline period in 2024 was go out there and talk about some comments made by Kent Hughes in regards to everything that went down. In particular, we're talking about the Jake Allen trade, we're going to talk about the lack of trades involving other players, and just Kent Hughes's overall thought process in regards to these events. So, I will leave a link in the description to this article on TVA Sports. I translated it from French into English. Important quotes from Kent Hughes, published earlier today, after the trade deadline period. The article, which is, again, translated, so I feel a little bit more comfortable going out there and just putting this one on the screen, talks about how GM Kent Hughes had a relatively quiet trade deadline on Friday, although he surprised many by managing to secure a conditional third-round pick for goaltender Jake Allen. TVA Sports has compiled the most notable statements from his speech into the media. Starting out with the comments made on David Savard, who remains with the team beyond the deadline. For us, David was part of our team. He's not someone that we were looking to trade. His value with the team and with young players are very high in our eyes. He wasn't impossible to trade, but that wasn't our goal. And so, when it comes to opening statements, opening remarks, I guess you could say, in regards to David Savard, the fact that the Montreal Canadiens kept him around is not the most surprising thing in the world, considering the fact that he said himself very openly, yeah, I don't want to leave, I want to stay here. He's from Quebec, he is a Montreal guy, and playing for his hometown Habs team in a very important role, mind you, as a defensively responsible, shot-blocking, shutdown beast, he certainly is valued in the locker room in Montreal. And I think a lot of Canadians fans have also come to appreciate the way David Savard has played too. Not because he's the highest flying, point producing, top scoring defenseman like Mike Matheson is, for example, but because David Savard just knows how to play the game the right way, especially in his own zone. When it comes to playing with defensive responsibility, playing with hot heart in your sleeve, you could debate that David Savard is one of the guys that exhibits that to the best of defensemen in the NHL. And so, the fact that he apparently was a hot commodity on the trade market, that's not surprising either. Hearing all these rumors about Tampa Bay and Toronto and everybody, I mean, the Maple Leafs got Joel Edmondson, so that kind of fills a similar role. To be honest, like, Savard and Edmondson, Edmondson? No way, that's not who we're talking about. Edmondson, excuse me. If you had told me they were cut from the same cloth, I'd believe you, because they do play pretty similar styles, not gonna lie. But for David Savard, him sticking around in Montreal is, in my opinion, more valuable to the team's locker room and overall morale than it would have been had they traded him away for some sort of a draft pick, a player that wouldn't really affect the Canadians and their development until 2025, 2026, 2027 even. So keeping Savard around, allowing him to teach some of these defensemen on the Canadians right now defensive lessons in how to play the game properly at this level, that's very valuable. So no wonder Kent Hughes went out there and said, yeah, we didn't really want to trade him. It wasn't our goal. The article then goes out there and talks about the menage à trois, which is really interesting because that phrase does not mean what it apparently means in French. Um, yeah, have you ever heard that Katy Perry song? Anyways, the article is talking about the goaltending trio, which lasted until March 8th. We knew that Caden Primo would have been claimed on waivers at the start of the season, and that Samuel Montembeau was not under contract. We weren't prepared to lose Caden on waivers and Sam at the end of the year on free agency. We didn't have a specific idea at the time. With the team we have and where we are, it was ideal to trade Jake Allen. Since we signed Sam Montembeau, though, I said the pressure was on me to make this trade. To be fair to all three goalies, we thank the three goalkeepers for their professionalism. They've been great in less than ideal conditions, and all three were real professionals. 
And that, of course, goes to show you the level of respect that Kent Hughes is trying to put onto his hockey team. How guys like Jake Allen, Samuel Montembeau, and Caden Primo had been rotated around in this seemingly unfair carousel, or menage a trois if you wanted to say that, of goaltenders. Again, that phrase means something very different when you use it in an English-speaking context. When it comes to the decision to use the final salary retention option on Jake Allen, Kent Hughes goes out there and says this, These holds are rarely used around the draft and more often used at the deadline. We wanted to resolve the situation with our goaltenders, and this was the option that presented itself to us. So with that in mind, it appears that the Jake Allen trade was only really facilitated because of that salary retention. Allen is going to be making only 50% of his $3.8-something million dollar cap against the New Jersey Devils' salary, so you could definitely understand that when it comes to the monetary side of things, Kent Hughes is essentially saying that, hey, you usually see salary retention spots only get used at the deadline anyway, so we wanted to get this trade done, we wanted to move him, so this was the only seemingly appropriate way to do that. There also was a conversation about whether or not we could have hoped to see the Canadians be buyers this deadline. I look forward to the day when we're buyers and not sellers. I'm very competitive. The sooner it happens, the better. I'd like to be around when the time is right, but I want it to be done the right way. So far, we've been buyers in some ways at the draft and sellers at the deadline. We would like to continue on this path in the draft this year. Being a seller or a buyer at the deadline depends on our performance on the ice during the season. And then, when it comes to other thoughts on players that are not named Jake Allen and David Savard, Kent Hughes says that there were calls. For most of them, we said that these were not players we were looking to trade, but that we were listening to offers. We haven't gotten to the stage of receiving offers for any of these extra players, though. And so, when it comes to that, I think... That pretty much encapsulates most of what we wanted to hear, right? The Canadians may have had a few calls on a few other guys, but none of these teams that were being told, yeah, sorry, we're not really shopping that guy. We'll listen to your offer, but we're not really shopping him. None of these players, aside Savard and Allen, seem to have garnered any sort of actual consideration because no team went out there and submitted an offer. Either that or Kent Hughes is lying through his teeth and there was another trade that was super close to getting done and then it just didn't happen. It pulled out at the last second. I don't know. That rarely happens nowadays. We usually hear inklings and conversations and tidbits as to what's going on. But for Kent Hughes to talk about the value of David Savard and to also shed some light on the Jake Allen situation, it pretty much sums up most of what we wanted to hear. I don't think there was anything huge or game-breaking otherwise that we were expecting Kent Hughes to be able to talk about in regards to this trade deadline. The Habs mostly had just these two guys that everybody was thinking about. There were a few conversations you could have had about other players. Josh Anderson was always talked about getting traded, but it's been kind of like that for the past few years. You could debate some of the other prospects, Jordan Harris, younger defensemen, but... Really, it was Savard and Allen, I feel, that were the most likely to get traded, and one of them did, the other didn't. Well, the Montreal Canadiens go out there and make themselves yet another transaction by trading away the prospect Jan Mishak. So, other than that, that seems to be our Montreal Canadiens update. Now we can just go back to paying attention to the team and whatever losses they accrue, whatever draft picks they get at the draft, hopefully, and where those picks lie. Do they pick Celebrity first overall? Do they get it? Do they get it? I don't know. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the Montreal Canadiens and Kent Hughes' response to this trade deadline period. I hope you enjoyed this. Vrishash Rosalie 9. And bye. <laughs>